what is going on everybody welcome back to another episode of unsolicited with sam and jordan i am sam this is jordan i'm featuring my brand new painted walls behind me i'm very excited about them how are you doing my love I'm doing good. I'm preparing for cozy weather the next couple of days. I know you already got hit with it, but there's a big um, stream of thunderstorms coming for tonight and tomorrow. Um, so I'm hungering down for that. I don't know if I've ever told you, but my um, apartment backs up to woods and the trees are very, very skinny trees. So they can't do much harm, but they move. So oh. when there's wind, it's loud and it feels like you're in a tunnel, um, which Brian, my significant other, um, is very calmed by. Um, however, me, I just sit there with anxiety and I'm like, this is the end. A tree is going to fall on me. So I've been mentally preparing myself um, for the trees because they're going to be they're going to be talking. Yeah, no, I am not a person at all who likes natural noises no. at all. It's just I, I hate to be like, I'm a city girl, da da da, because I like kind of live in the suburbs basically on Staten Island. But like, I, it, there's a, always a siren going on somewhere. People are talking outside. Like, there's never like quiet. It's like yeah. there's always something. But anytime I've gone out into the, the woods and I go to sleep and it's like completely silent or like I hear like, you know, like trees or like whatever, I'm like, mm -mm. today's um the day I die. My bedroom would be your literal nightmare because my bedroom's like in the corner and again, backs up to the woods. So like when the TV goes off at the end of the night, when everything's quiet, you, it sounds, and this I actually like, the trees scare the fuck out of me, but this part I actually like, it feels like you're sleeping in a tent. I hear all the bugs like chirping outside and it's just like um. very calming. I don't like the bug noises either. Yeah, no, you would not like my bedroom. That I don't mind. That's like, you know how people get like those little machines to play like background noise? Usually it's like the ocean or rain or something. No, mine is just the wilderness mm -hmm. and there's no machine. It's just actual bugs. Um, And I've also, backing up to the woods, I have never, I didn't know half of these bugs existed. They are foul disgusting creatures that always fly you just will be sitting in the kitchen and you'll hear ding ding and it's bugs trying to fly towards the light and they're big and they're weird looking i saw like a moth looking thing it was tan and it had a black cross on it i was like where the fuck did you come from what you know disturbing i've seen more critters and creatures than i ever needed to but the sound of them is calming <laughs> that's insane that is insane. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think that there would be crazy bugs like that in yes. South Jersey, but hey. And the dragonflies, the dragonflies are everywhere and they are not scared of anybody. They will fly right in your face and not move an inch. Are dragonflies blind? Are they? Is that why they can't see me? I don't know. It's like, you know, like cicadas. Cicadas are blind and that's oh. why they just like hit into you. But I don't know. Maybe dragonflies are blind. I typed in. This is a good <laughs> teaser for the rest of our conversations later. I, know, I was typing really. our dragonflies and I got to dragons and it says, <laughs> are dragons real? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Dragonflies are not blind. Oh, they're okay. Just, so they're just aggressive. Assholes. You know what I you know what I feel like we've been accomplishing over the last few years because I haven't seen them a lot this year? <gasps> the, the lantern flies. Yep. Those motherfuckers have been scarce, at least by me. But I know that they originally were in your area. Yes. So but I have not seen them and I'm like, we did it. We yes. did it, Joe. No, we, we <laughs> did it, Joe. Um, you know, oh, also speaking of, she was in Philly today crazy um slay queen. queen philly girls um no i definitely i still see them from time to time but like nothing like when they first took over our universe and i think sam was like the number one person for killing the lantern flies like that was her mission and she took it very seriously i remember the first time i saw well i saw a lantern fly on staten island but I originally remember driving up and down the turnpike and seeing like the billboard for it, like in Jersey. And it was just like kill on site basically. And I remember asking you about them 
like because I was just like, what the heck are these? You, you have to kill them. Yep. And I was like, okay. And then I saw one on Staten Island, and I was like, oh, they're here. They're invading. And then I was with Erin, and she was just like, and then like we like looked it up, and like the New York City like Parks Department was like, you have to like basically tell us when you've killed one. Like they were like keeping track. So we like reached out to the parks department and we were like, we killed a lanternfly. And they were like, oh, cool. Put it in a plastic bag and we'll come by and pick it up. And we were like, no, don't do that. We don't want you to. We're we're in the backyard tanning right now. Like we're not going to wait for you to show up to take our lanternfly. That is insane. What were they doing with them? I don't know, but they never came. They never came to uh, to take the lantern fly away, even though we told them. So maybe it was just like a ploy. I don't know. But then after that, we would see them and we would crush them on sight. Yes. I also feel like people were just making up rumors about them to encourage killing them. Because at one point, someone came up to me and was like, did you hear they kill dogs? If your dog eats one, it's dead. And I was like, and then I was like, I will never let another one breathe another breath of air and then everyone a couple weeks later was like that is not true <laughs> and so i swear we- they just started spreading misinformation to encourage murder yeah no a hundred percent a hundred percent but it worked it worked i wanted every single one of them dead i have started noticing like maybe they're like evolving um because i've noticed like different versions of them and i don't know if it's just them growing but i've seen like really little ones and then i've seen like the big ones but they look like slightly like it doesn't oh. just look like a baby version oh they look oh, like no, no, no. a little off i saw one where the you know how usually they lift up the wings and you see the red yeah i saw one where the wings were just red and i was like <gasps> that's freaky uh they're like covid Yes. They like keep yes. like changing so that yes. oh that's so crazy. Oh. I'll kill it anyway. I was actually having a full blown discussion about COVID today and just Ooh. how just like going back to that time of our lives. Do you remember where you were and like what was going on when you were like, damn, this shit is real? Yeah. What was I it? <laughs> I was on an airplane. <laughs> no. I went to California in the beginning of March of 2020 to go visit Sarah when she was living there at the time. And we went to Disneyland and every, like we were dousing ourselves in sanitizer and I got on an airplane. I used a bandana to cover my mouth and nose because my dad was like, first of all, my dad was pissed. Sorry, dad. Um, He was just like, you shouldn't be doing that. You're going to get sick. And I was like, no, I'll be fine. I didn't get sick, but um, I got home and I think the next day New York City shut down. That's terrifying. I was not on a plane. However, yeah. I was on the phone with my best friend from college, Becca, and we were talking because at that point, initially, it was just like, oh, you get a two week extended spring break. We'll give you some classes online. Like everyone will be back in a couple of weeks. This is no big deal. So me and her were talking and we're like, Oh, like we should take advantage of this. She's a Dallas Cowboys fan. So she was like, what if we get it? A- you were in school. Yes. I was still in college. Oh my God. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah. It ruined my senior year. I never went back to college. Like I just left school and that was, that was the end. I didn't get a graduation, like a real one. Um, it was pretty, pretty absurd. Um, but yeah, so I'm on the phone with Becca and she was like, what if we get a really cute Airbnb in Dallas, we can tour AT&T stadium. And like, as much as I hate the Cowboys, like that's a stadium I've wanted to at least see. So I'm like, you know what? This sounds like a really cute idea. I talked to my parents, both my mom and my dad early on were like, I don't know how real this is. Like, this could just be another swine flu. If you're going to get sick here, you could get sick there. So like, who cares? Travel, take advantage. Um, and literally me and her on FaceTime. I'm, I have a flight to Dallas, Texas, like in my cart, we're finalizing Airbnb stuff. And I look up at the TV and all of a sudden it's like breaking news. The NBA has shut down. And I literally looked at her and I was like, um, I think this is more serious than we are under the impression right now. And we didn't buy the tickets and thank God, because literally like two or three days later is when they shut everything, like no crossing state lines. And I was like, you would have been stuck. I would have been stuck in Cowboys territory. (laughs) That's even worse. Yeah, no, it was nuts. Yeah, no, that, that, that it was, I almost got stuck in California. Sam All also right. thought I was patient zero. 
with so COVID. Jordan definitely had COVID in like January because she was coughing. She had a fever. She had all the symptoms of COVID, but she kept getting tested for the flu and it kept coming back negative. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bitch, you had COVID. Yep. You were you were the reason why. <laughs> I got tested. Therapy. I literally got tested for everything under the sun. And just to like put the cherry on top, New York City was the hot spot for COVID. Abby, my best friend who lives in New York City, I was literally there like right around New Year's. I might have been there for New Year's um, and then came home two weeks later, was could not breathe, couldn't stay awake. I missed so much time at work, so much of school. I was a hot mess. And then, yeah, I got tested. I got tested for bronchitis. Like I got tested for Everything. pneumonia, mono, flu. No, I couldn't. And they were like, we don't know what to give you. Like, we don't know how to make you better. And then a month yeah. later, COVID. Yeah. No, I, I remember it because like the room that we used to work in was almost like vacuum sealed shut like yeah. the door because it was like an editing room. So it was kind of soundproof. And like you'd open the door and it was like and like that was like it, it was like unsuctioning itself. And it was such a heavy door. And I remember Brian, shout out Brian, who was our editor at mm-hmm. the time freaking baller him and i we with the three of us in this room and jordan was sick and brian and i were like literally using full cans of lysol and just spraying the whole room like th- someone came in and they were like <coughs> oh my god and i was just like i'm telling you jordan's got something i don't know what it is but yep. i just, we sprayed everything with lysol and we didn't get sick so it ended up working out yeah yeah you definitely you definitely had covid I believe patient that till the day zero. I die. Yes. No, I I had I actually I definitely wasn't patient zero, but I am fully convinced I had COVID. No, you had to have because if you weren't get, getting positive results from any other thing, and it lasted like, for weeks. Like I was sick. Remember, I was literally sick until February. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like Super Bowl time, and you still were like lingering with the yes. cough and stuff. My voice completely changed. Weird times. Yes. Weird times. Very weird times. Although I feel like we've talked about it before, but I do miss the, the quarantine sometimes. I it was such a, such a weird time. I think I also think it happened at like the perfect time of year for a quarantine to happen. The spring started springing. Yeah. And yeah. I a crazy time. It really was. I genuinely wish that we could get like a two week nationwide shutdown. Once we can rotate the weeks, so it's fair. Like they just pick a random two weeks every year. It could be like the Olympics where you get like four years notice. So if you're planning things, you know what? Let me run for president. (laughs) I'm like, everybody off. Shut up. It never happens during football season. So that can stay the same. Never between the months of September and February. Um did you see that the guy, the guy, the governor who is now Kamala Harris's running yes. mate, Tim Walls, yes. is a Swifty? Yes, huge Swifty. Yeah, I think it's because he has daughters. But yeah, I saw this tweet resurface from 2022 about how he was like, didn't get tickets. And I was like, he just like me for real. Yes. <laughs> and now we finally have a VP that is going to go after Ticketmaster, even if it's for his own agenda. His agenda is my agenda. So I love it. <laughs> Lay. Well, I think that it is time to get into the topic that we have been dying to speak to each other about since Sunday night. Um, the House of the Dragon finale, if you want to call it that, happened on Sunday night. Please, Jordan, tell me how, because we both said, like, this is bullshit. Yeah. I literally, the episode ended, screen goes black, and I go, are you fucking kidding? I thought we were like halfway through the episode, and it was just over. Honestly, rewind slightly. When we clicked on the episode, and I saw it was an hour and 10 minutes, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I was was expecting like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minute long finale. No. Um, But yeah, overall, just the season as a whole felt like nothing really went down like things happened but like storyline progression we're still in the same exact spot that we were 
at the end of season one. And like, obviously I understand. Um, I saw some tweets from people who read the book and they were like, they're actually setting up season three really great. Like, just hold on, hold on. And like that I believe and that I get, but still I thought they should have given us something in season two. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did give us the battle episode, which was very, very, very good. But like, that's it. Yeah. And like, I saw a lot of people calling the finale and basically all of season two was just a trailer for season three. Yeah. That's the perfect way to put this was like a novella in book terms. Like, for sure. Like this was just like a, here's a little something that's going on with everybody. Here's some fun. Here's like one fun dragon thing. Um, enjoy, but honestly, nothing's going to happen. And that would be totally okay. I completely understand if I didn't have to wait two fucking years for season three. Like right, if it was right. coming out, this was like a mid, do you remember again, I'm on my pretty little liars kick, but do you remember when like shows like that would do, they had so many episodes, they would do like a mid season finale. That would be nuts. And then you would finish off the season. Like if that was the case here and in six months we were getting season three, I'd be like, perfect because we got the peak with season with episode four we get all the teases for um season three but no not when you have to wait two years no i'm i'm very very upset um this cat is gonna do something and it's gonna make me so angry oh no my house is this looks fine my entire house is in disarray over here um and he's like walking over everything He can get hurt. He'll learn his lesson. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I think like through this whole time, I was like, like 45 minutes into the episode, I was like, okay, things can still happen. You know, like I was like, we still have time for a really epic battle scene or even just like the beginning of the Dance of the Dragons. Like just to like get us be like, oh yeah, it's about to happen. And then like not have it. I would have even preferred that. Yeah. Just the fact when, when the screen went black, I think we both sat there in silence, like Michael and I sat there in silence and he was just like, no, no. And then the freaking credits came on and I was like, I like, I was sitting on my stomach and he was sitting like up against the bed and I like literally like turned around and looked at him and I was like, I always watch House of the Dragon on my stomach. I like have to like be glued into the TV. Otherwise I know I'm going to miss something. So, oh my God though. It was just. There was like so many good things happening and you were waiting for that next thing to no. happen and it just didn't just didn't happen. No. And so I'm um, yeah, mildly disappointed, but I feel like season 3 is going to be so fucking good. Season 3 is going to be nuts and like in a couple years when I want to go back and rewatch this series, going from season 2 to season 3 is going to be great. Literally, as I said earlier, the only thing I'm pissed about is that now I have to wait two years right which is like what people were doing when game of thrones was on tv like people were waiting all this time that's true i binged how many was there seven or eight seasons eight so i binged the first seven seasons in a month leading up and then i watched uh, season eight weekly yeah no that i i wanted to do that and it didn't happen so i just waited for season eight to be over and then I think it was the following year I finally sat down and like watched it. It took me like two months to watch the entire show. Yeah. It's really not that long. It's, it's not just, possible. It's, it's also it's, like I was in college at the time. So like I, I didn't care if I was staying up. We would be up to like two, three o'clock in the morning watching it. Right, right. Yeah. It was and it's a great bingeable show because when you watch them back to back, you see more things as opposed to watching them week to week. Yeah. Um my friend Kat is watching Game of Thrones for the first time right now, and she got up. I don't. If anybody hasn't watched uh, Game of Thrones at all, there's spoiler. We're always talking about spoilers here, but yeah. more spoilers. Um, she got up to the Red Wedding, and right, which is like, I remember watching the Red Wedding for the first time, and no. I was like, so I told her I was like, wait, I want to watch it with you, like in tandem. So we started our TVs at the same time, like in our respective houses. And I watched the red wedding, the red wedding with her, and we were like texting the whole time. And she was like, "Something bad's gonna happen." And I was like, "Maybe." And she was like, "Rob." And I was like, 
I can't say anything. And she was like, what happens to Rob? And I was like, Rob dies. Rob dies. Nothing. I even was like warned <laughs> about not the red, not the episode. Like I, I really avoided for starting Game of Thrones so late. I avoided all spoilers. Same, like, I have no idea what the, and I'm sure I saw things, but like at the time didn't I didn't sense. have the context. Yeah. But so I remember it was my boyfriend at the time. We were literally, it all started because he was like, season eight's coming out. I'm caught up and I'm not waiting for you. So like you either have to watch it or you're watching the new ones with me. So I was like, damn. So I flew through it. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was like late one night and we were like right at the red, red wedding. And I wanted to watch one more, but I was like half asleep. And he was like, no, like we're going to watch this one tomorrow. And I was like, I'm not ready to turn it off yet. And he was like, but you're going to fall asleep halfway through and you can't like, you and have to sit down and watch it. The next day I was like, what is up with this episode? And then I was watching it. And I was just like, what, yeah. what, what? Like, it's like the best and worst TV episode ever. Yeah, no, it's we. And as I, I told Michael, I was like, okay, I'm going to go watch the red wedding with Kat. And he was just like, good luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. And then I, as I was sitting there too, like I had the, all those same emotions again. And I was like, damn, damn, this is not even easier the second time around. No. And I've been talking about rewatching Game of Thrones now that like House of the Dragon is like, there's things, which we have to get back to actually House of the Dragon. Because... It does tie in Game of Thrones when Damon touches the weirwood tree. Yes. Which was crazy. And there's like the whole thing. I don't know if you remember, um, but there was like this whole prophecy about like the prince who was promised. Yes. And everyone was saying like, it's Damon, it's Damon, it's Damon. And then some people were talking about other things, but nobody ever said Daenerys because yes. she's a woman. But I found out from all the, I watched so many freaking videos about lore of game of thrones and house of the dragon the high valerian word for prince is not gendered so it could mean technically in our english princess so now with everything that was going on with damon seeing everything and like finally coming to his senses seeing yeah. daenerys with her dragons now everyone's like daenerys has to be the prince who was promised yes because that, even though she fucked everything up in the end, yeah, she brought dragons back. That's actually fucking insane. I love. I remember she popped up that sh infamous shot from the back, and I was like, ah! yeah, ah! We're like we know her. I know her. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I know she went fucking batshit crazy. They could never make me hate her. No. Literally, who's afraid of little old me? Her theme song. Oh my god. I have been getting so many Taylor Swift Game of Thrones edits on my TikTok. I'm getting so many Chapel Roan House of the Dragon oh, edits yeah. on my TikTok. There was one I saw of the song Casual with um, Rhaenyra and... Is it the one oh. I sent you? Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, wait. Oh, that's right. You did send me that. <laughs> I forgot. It was the perfect, perfect edit. And I loved it. Yeah, so obviously there's a little bit of love going on between Rhaenyra and Allison. Allison. And I have a feeling that when she kissed, um, I can never remember her name. I'm going to say Melisandre, but that's not right. But her Marina master of whispers. or something, Mariana? Something like that. I, I cannot remember all these freaking names. They're unreal. Um, but I feel like that kiss was just because they never said anything about it again there was no tension between them like nothing was i have oh sorry continue no it's okay i have a feeling that they just used that to show that rhaenyra does have interest in women yeah because it seemed like just like a vulnerable moment for her and she was like just being consoled by another woman and it just kind of happened but I have a feeling there. I mean, they've been talking about her having a crush on Allison since they were young. I got those vibes early, early on. And then everything happened. And I was like, oh, like, Gator must have been off. Right. I think that that was just kind of like sprinkled in for us and people who caught it, caught it. And people who didn't, did. And, yeah. But like, now that when, when Allison was just like, yeah, just come with me. I was just like, bitch, you want to be girlfriends. You want to be girl. You guys want to kiss. You guys want to kiss. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> and also in the TikTok that I sent Sam, there was the edit of when Sir Christian Cole, back when young Rhaenyra, yeah, he's annoying. I fucking hate uh, him. <laughs> weirdo. Um, he was asking her to come with him, and she was like, fuck no. Why yes. the hell would I do that? And she's given like the stank face, like, do you know who I am? I'm not going with you. Mm -hmm. And then there's Allison saying the exact same thing. Come with me. And Renera's like, okay, girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She And like, she was just kind of like, I know I have to stay. Like, I have to stay because I'm the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. But if I wasn't, like, bitch, I would be going with you. You know, yeah. like, it's, it was a very, I, I was not expecting that scene at all. Like, for Allison to be there in the castle and i was like whoa what is she doing here and like that whole moment was like very like i felt like i was there like i felt like i was just like a part of that conversation it was like it, a very well done scene yes really it was very it. intimate very personal um allison also 100 percent picks favorites with her children she loves her daughter more than anything and she's Literally. like fuck my sons they suck yeah. i also just want to know like how did they end up so evil? Because Allison seems pretty even keel. Valeri Valaris, what was his name? I'm, I'm mixing up Akatar and Viserys. Valerius. Valerius. <laughs> um, Viserys enough. was like the kindest, most respectful king. Like that was literally what he was known for. So how did they end up so fucking awful well you know what'll be interesting to see is i don't think a lot of people realize this but there was a scene like towards the end as like people like you see the starks marching you see the lannisters marching and then you see another dragon mm -hmm. that's her fourth child that's her that's her third son who i don't know where he's been i think his name is D it's not damon darren darren i forgot there was another one Yes, it's Darren. So Darren, there was like another blue like uh, dragon. And at first I was like, whose dragon is that? Like marching with the high towers. Like yeah. that was so weird. And then Michael was like, oh no, that's Darren. That's the fourth son. And I was like, whoa, he's the youngest. So if we meet Darren next season, it'll be interesting to see if he's also a piece of shit. Then maybe she just creates piece of shit men and very sweet daughters. Maybe yeah. It's just the way the world is working. I don't know. Speaking of, you just said Hightower. We already talked about when Damon touched the tree. Did you see the clip of Otto Hightower in jail? Dude, I saw that. And what I just did was what I did when I saw it. I was like, what? Who? I was like, that's why he's not responding to her letter. Yeah, that's what I said. I was just like, I was like, wait, he's in a cage. That's why he's not responding to her letters. And because she was talking to her brother, who's also just like, bitch, I don't talk to dad. Like, yeah. whatever. You know, like, you're the only one. And, you know, I had a feeling when she said that to him the first time, I was like, he must be off somewhere in a place where he cannot. Not to say that I didn't know if he was in jail or not, but I was like, maybe he's avoiding them or, like, went on his merry way. But, like, he didn't just go back home. I thought he died. I was like, damn, RIP. I was, like, really sad. You thought he died? did <laughs> i thought he died no they just sent him away they were like you're not the hand of the king anymore goodbye no, i know they sent him away but i thought that like wherever he ended up or like he's older like i just thought uh. he passed like something happened to him or whatever and i was like oh and then i saw him in jail and i was like whoa there you are the other jump scare was i don't know if you saw it but right before damon goes to go touch the tree you see like this like <laughs> fucking what thing was that a lot of people again from all these videos that i'm watching yeah. um a lot of people are thinking that they're the uh not children of the corn what the fuck are they called the children <laughs> the ones that create the night king like oh, those, yeah. like that like group of like creepy like nature children yes. fuck now i'm now it's gonna bother me children of the something game of thrones i also loved the scene with damon bowing to bending the knee to rhaenyra uh, children of the forest 
That's what it is. The forest. Yes. So someone said that. Someone else said that it's because it had antlers. It was like the Barath, like a representing a Baratheon, because like their shield is like a deer. But I don't think that that was it. I think it was just some creepy fucking thing that was like being really fucking weird, and I hated that. But yeah, no, I genuinely I respect Simon Strong so much for overhearing. Damon talking to the guy that Rhaenyra sent and was straight up like, this ain't right. No. I'm telling. And he straight up just sent it to Rhaenyra, showed up, and he was just like, um, bitch, uh, come get your husband. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And then you see him in the background after he, like, bows to Rhaenyra, and Simon Strong's like, oh, oh this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> he is the realest motherfucker in that show. And, like, just oh, so just, like, he give, delivers like the way he delivers all his lines like when damon walked in there initially and was like i'm taking it and he was like okay yeah. like it's yours congrats yeah. like we ain't fighting you bro like, yeah he's it's just, yours i'm just here for a good time and he's just a good guy and you don't get many of them in this show yeah no he's just straight up just like he's like i'm just trying to do the right thing yeah. i'm just trying to make sure that like my home stays in place basically it's like, I, I respect him so yeah. much. But yeah, I really didn't know what Damon was going to do there. Because because I at first I thought I was like, maybe the guy that Rhaenyra sent was like saying all that stuff to Damon because he was trying to get him to say like, oh yeah, I want to be king. Or if that guy was genuinely like, you got to be king. Like, I didn't know where we were going with that. But I think that he genuinely was just like, a man needs to be in charge. Nobody's going to listen to a woman kind of thing. And I was yeah. like, but no, Damon, he was like, you're, you're the queen because he saw, he was like, this is what needs to happen in order for us to like continue living. Otherwise, Shout out to our witch friend. Alice freaking rivers queen literally just saved the realm. Yeah. Because, and, but, like, the whole thing with, like, those types of people, with, like, the Three-Eyed Raven and everything, like, they're very, they're always exactly where they need to be. It's yeah. almost like they, like, she knew that he had to go through what he went through to then show him that in order for him to continue on the correct story. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, they are know-all kind of things. It's one thing to, like, bend the knee and promise yourself to Rhaenyra but like still think that you deserve it because then you're always going to have that sense of resentment and the fact that he got to the point where he was like nope I don't need it after I saw that like she is the rightful heir um now it's like I don't know vibes are just good vibes are very good yeah seems like we're we're going in the right direction I mean everyone's gathering their armies you know there's gonna be a pretty freaking insane battle and if it doesn't happen in episode one of season three I'm going to be pissed. Do you think that's how it's going to start? Why not? I mean, yeah, with the way they fucking ended season two, we deserve it. Yeah, why not? Just like start it off with dragons just fucking just coming at each other. Ugh. It's going to be nuts. I also really, I didn't enjoy it, but like the, I, I was thinking about how like no one even talks to Helena, like the sister. Yeah. And then when Damon came in and was like, you need to ride and like all this stuff. And all of a sudden he's like talking to his sister. I was like, when was the last time you even talked to your sister at all? Like, and that's when, you know, I was like, good that Allison was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, yes. no. But I like, also loved when she stood up to him where he was like, you need to do this. And she literally looked at him. She's like, what are you going to do if I don't like be, be fucking for real. She was I like, I, I'm a seer. I know what you did to Aegon. Like, I, I know what the fuck's going on. What are you going to do? Burn me like you burned our brother? Like, okay, then what? Queen. Literally, right now, technically, I, I guess. She is a queen. Yeah. <laughs> and Aegon just fucking hightailing it out of there. He was just like, uh-uh, goodbye. I know, that's going to be interesting because didn't Allison promise his head? Which I was like, I audibly gasped when yeah. she like did her like little nod to like agree like Rhaenyra has to kill Aegon in order for this to work. I was like, oh, you know what? That's how season one, season three, episode one is going to start. It's going to start with Rhaenyra going into King's Landing and sitting on the throne. That's how it's going to start. 
I cannot wait to see that. It's going to be so good. Should we read the books? I have um, Fire and Blood on my Audible right now. But the thing is, it's not this story, at least. Game of Thrones books are. But House of the Dragon is based off of a book, The Song of... No. Yeah, Fire and Blood. Yeah. And it's like a history book. Oh. So they basically took it. It's like a Targaryen history book. So like the storylines that they're creating in the show are not in the book. They're being created based on the information from the book. Got it. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So, but I did want to listen to it because I thought it might be interesting because I'm like super into all this lore. Yeah. And I was like, and Michael was the one who was like, we're going on a road trip in a couple of weeks. And he was like, we can listen to Fire and Blood. And I was like, sure. So I got it on Audible. But yeah, I think it's more like a history book than anything. But Interesting. Okay. In, in Game of Thrones books, I've heard, are quite difficult to read. Yeah. I've, I heard they're worth it. Like, incredible. I mean, obviously, the, the show kind of attests to that sure. um but you yeah, know the old language i think would be really tough for me yeah and there's so much more things and different things and dif- and also different names that all sound the same yes so i know i know erin read them mm, because she can- what i said god bless oh yeah i know like literally like i don't know how she does that, but she read all of them. Like, no problem. I was um, texting Aaron today about Throne of Glass. Oh, were you? Yes. All my friends are friends with each other now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. I literally texted her and I was like, Aaron, it's Jordan. I need to talk about this hearing <laughs> someone. She was like, thank God. Erin, <laughs> it's Jordan. Please. <laughs> Please talk to me. <laughs> Uh, I literally just, I sat on the phone with Erin on Friday afternoon and we just talked about the fourth wing series for like an hour. Literally my one friend, she texted me a couple weeks ago and she was like, um, I'm getting ready to start throne of glass. And I think I was on either air of fire or assassin's blade. So like book three or four at that point. And then again, I'm, I'm itching because I picture young Rhaenyra as the main character in this book yeah that's so i like needed someone else to be like yes or no like i just wanted to talk about it with someone because she's all i can picture and she'd be perfect um and so i texted my friend sarah and i was like did you start throne of glass yet she's like no she's like i finished fourth wing and it was so good so I needed a break from fantasy, but I'm gonna be picking throne of glass back up and i was like oh and then i was like who else do i know that read it i was like Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to read the Fourth Wing series? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm interested so to like, hear I your almost bought author. it this week. Oh. But I'm not, I'm not there yet. I still have three books left in this series. And then I want to do a little hiatus from fantasy. Well, I'm doing that right now um, with I'm reading None of This is True, finally. <gasps> oh, my God. Sam, you're going to love it. I'm like, I'm. Or, it's so easy to read. Yes. I'm flying through it. I started it like two days ago. I'm already 150 pages in. I, I'm like reading it in increments like throughout the day. It. I remember I was like, I could literally sit down and read this book in one sitting. And I couldn't yeah. because like life, but like sure. realistically I could have. I agree. It is so easy to read. It's so spaced out in terms of like the way that the chapters are actually set up. Yes. Like at least in my book, like every chapter starts on the right side. So like the left pages are blank. Yes. So it's like that just flying through that the the text is fairly large it's spaced really spaced out so i'm like mm-hmm. this is great and it is it's like a nice little palette cleanser yes. and after this i'm going into powerless and reckless you, um, i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on that because i'm dying to read those too i got powerless for my birthday shout out cat um Catherine is the way that i start reading certain books she's the reason why i read akatar to begin with because she bought me um Akadar and um Mist and Fury for Christmas. And she was like, here, start them. And I was like, okay. And that's how I read them. So she she let me borrow her fourth wing books. And now she bought me Powerless. So I am gonna read that after this. And I'm very excited about it. And I think after Powerless and Reckless, I'm gonna read the cool print, the cruel prince. Mm. Um 
which I've heard a lot of amazing things about. So when are you getting to Throne of Glass, my love? That's like probably a next year project. What I, am I going to do? Talk to Erin. Talk to Erin. <laughs> no, literally. No, no one wants to read Throne of Glass with me. My friend started it and then That's couldn't. It's a big commitment. It's a, it's a big commitment. It's taking me like three, almost four months. Yeah. So it's like, and I have so much on my to-be-read list that I know I will get through faster yeah. if I just read them now. And then maybe I'll like ask for the Throne of Glass things for like Christmas or something and I'll yeah. get them for Christmas. Ooh, and then... for, it's a big, I think the whole set is like 200 bucks for all yeah. the books. Yeah, so that that that's what I'll do. I'll that'll be my New Year's resolution next year is to read Crescent City and Throne of Glass. Okay. Oh my god, I should start making a Christmas list of like all the books that I want. No, literally, that's probably the only. And last year I was a f- idiot. My mom was like, "Do you want me to get you books?" And I was like, "No," but that was before I really got into fantasy. So like, I was just reading like random. I, it's very different. Tell me if you agree. Like, also, I'm just like talking this whole podcast. I keep putting my paper bag. Or paper, my clip, She's whatever. Che- you're checking like, your blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, literally, I'm like in the <laughs> ER. Um, but so if you see that on my finger, that's what it is. Um, but I don't know, reading fantasy, like I feel like it's so much easier for me to like be planned out. I don't know, like nonfiction or fiction, I would just like pull one at a time, like a series here and there. But like fantasy, I'm like, I need to read this and then I'm going to read this. Yeah. I'm going to take a little break and read a couple random books and I'm going to do this because they're all commitments. Like they're all hunky chunky. They're um, all series. Ser- yeah. Series. Seri? <laughs> I think series is the plural. They're okay. all series. So it's like, you know, you can't just jump in and read one book. Like you have at least two, three, <gasps> five books to read. May I make a recommendation? Yes, please. If you have an inkling to read a standalone fantasy book, oh, you oh, please read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'll do anything. I will ship you a copy of it. Okay. I will put it on the list. I actually think I do have it on my list. I don't oh. have the book. Catherine has the book. Um, I was actually perusing her library the other day because she has so many. Um, she told me... I've heard good things about it, but she was telling me she could not get into it. It took me a while where, cause I was like, okay, like, where's this going? It definitely starts slow. However, it is just one of the most beautiful, spectacular books I've ever read in my time. It's on, like I have two books up for display on my shelf above my TV and it's that and where the crawdad sing. Oh. I love where the crawdads sing. I love where the crawdads sing. Oh, I found a book so similar to it. Ooh. It's called, I think it's The Girls in the Stilt House. Phenomenal. Ooh, that sounds good. I loved where the crawdads sing. It was such a good experience reading that. And then the movie was exactly the book. It was. However, I wish it was a series. Really? They left, there were certain things that they left out. I can't remember what it is right now, but I wished it was a series. They did a great, great job with it. Yeah. The girls in the stilt house. So if you are looking for where the crawl dad sings, it's very similar vibes. Like in a marsh in the Carolinas, a young girl. I just wrote it down. Um, Do you know they're making a fourth wing? series i heard yes uh-huh um amazon i think is doing it okay but I, it's not gonna be out for a while i don't think i am planning on reading fourth wing um maybe i'll ask because isn't the third one coming out in january Mm-hmm. maybe i'll ask for fourth wing for christmas and like start it in january and then i'll just go right into the third one fourth wing is very easy to read okay good it is it's not like as i mean there's a lot of details of things but like you know like with like akatar and things like there's a lot of world building yes that doesn't really happen in fourth wing it's just like you're out of school they're learning how to ride dragons like that's that's it that's all you gotta know it's just the lore that comes with it got it that you learn throughout the book like it's not like you know like Akatar used to that like that's why I really didn't enjoy that first book was because like for like 
good 150, 200 pages. I'm sitting there. And they're just building a world and this bitch is painting and can't read. Like, I'm like, great. You know, I, <laughs> that's all. Of, I, spoiler alert. That's all of Avatar, the first one. Um, and then the last like 100 pages are like spectacular and I love them. But yeah, so it's like not the same as that kind of fantasy world building. I mean, you get like the map, you know, like they give you the map in the book and stuff like that. But like. Yeah. For me, at least, I felt like it was a very digestible from, okay. straight from the start. Yeah, no, I am very, very excited for that. The other fantasy, I think it's a it's a duo. It's two, and I don't think there are going to be any more. Um, but Divine Rivals, I am very excited to read. Have you heard anything about Ooh, that? I have heard of it, but I have not heard anything past just the Divine Rivals. I, it's been, I've literally had it. I bought it months ago. It's been on my shelf for so long and I cannot wait to read it so I heard that's like an easy like it's more of a young adult fantasy but apparently it's very good once I'm done with no this is true we can have another like fun book talk segment talking about another book that we've read in at this not at the same time but another book that we've both read but yeah Throne of Glass Crescent City will be next year's uh everything that I tackle Okay. For now, it's every random book that's on my to be read list. Like, got it. Do you know what you're gonna read when you finish? None of this is true. Yeah, Powerless. Oh yeah, doll, you just told me that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I have Powerless, and when I'm finished with it, I'll just go out and I'll just buy Reckless and read that, and then there's three, right? The new one just came out. Powerful, I think. Yeah. Maybe I buy both of them at the same time, but I do have. I think I have uh, books to read note in my phone. Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a list. But I'm almost at the end of it. I'm going to need to update it. Uh, where the heck? Oh, books to read. 2024. Um, Fourth Wing, Iron Flame. Oh, yeah. Abby LaRue. Yes. Powerless, Cruel Prince, Wicked Queen. Wicked King, Queen of Nothing. Uh... Wow. Have you read um, A Man Called Ove? I've never heard of that. It's I've seen it like all over Book Talk. It's a movie now, but they changed the name to A Man Called Otto. Um, and apparently, oh, that um, I've heard of. Yes. Well, me and Spencer just did that thing where we go to Barnes Noble and we just like randomly pick out books for each other. And that's what he picked out for me. So I may read that one soon. Cute. Yeah, the other thing on here is I Found You, which is another one of those Lisa Jewell books that I have because apparently I'm Lisa Jewell's biggest fan. You um, are. But I have that book that it's just like another standalone that I'll probably read that after Powerless um, or like when I finish that series. Then I, then I read, I don't think you read Icebreaker, right? No. I read Icebreaker and I was like, that was the first book I read this year. And it took me like two days to read it. And there is a second book that came out that's like for another character. But I've kind of felt like now that I'm like out of like where I was at in the beginning of that, because I've read so much better books now. <laughs> it's like that was the book that got me back into reading. Yeah. And now I'm like, wow, that book was actually pretty crappy. <laughs> Literally. <sighs> me was falling over. It, yeah yeah it was just like yeah it got me back into it yeah. and it was such a great way to get me back into it but like there's so many better books to be reading like I'm not gonna read the, the next one is called wildfire and I'm like I'm not I'm not gonna read this <laughs> no I literally tried reading a and like this is nothing I'm not one of the people that hates Colleen Hoover by any means but I think she's very good for like if you're in a reading slump and need something just like quick, dramatic, easy. Like her books are perfect for that. And they're perfect for like if you've never been a reader or if you haven't read in forever, like to get you back into it. Um, speaking of It Ends With Us was that book for me. And the movie comes mm -hmm. out this weekend. Are you going to see it? I didn't read it. So yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really planning on it. That's but one at some point you have to. If th that's a book I would listen to. Okay. Listen I would to listen it. to it because I feel like I, I go through books better when I'm listening to them. Out and of 
Uh, I mean, I can't say that because I haven't read all of them, but I've read like the big Colleen Hoover ones. Um, that's by far the best. Eh, yes. uh, Verity. Verity is really good. I read Verity. Yeah. That was the one of two Colleen Hoover books that I read. Both of What's which the I other one that you read? Um, Heartbones. Oh, I never read that one. It's on the lower scale. I picked it up because I, I think it was a blind date with a book. Oh, really? I think it, yeah, it was like, because it takes place in like the beach. And it was like beachy romance type of deal. And I was like, oh, fun. And I picked it up and it was Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. And I was like, okay. And I read it in like a day. Yep. And it was um, very surface level. Speaking of book talk. Oh! Um, <laughs> I had that literally stacked in my brain, Rick, ready to go. Like, I was just like, when it's time to talk about this, yes. I'm going to say, speaking of book talk. <laughs> Shut up. It's the brain cell working in overdrive. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. But people of the book talk community are talking about this love story, kind of. We think it's a love story. It could be. Real life, real life people for a Olympic gold medalist. It's the tennis mixed doubles. Yes. Who dated for four years, broke up right before the Olympics happened, then competed in the Olympics, then won the gold medal, kissed on the court, had shared a very beautiful, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of them on the pedestal yes. with his forehead on her temple and she, they're just both so happy with their gold medal. And then they asked them, are you guys back together? And they're like, that's none of your business. But in my brain, this is the most spectacular love series that anyone could have ever thought of. I don't know how you can go through all of that and not get back together. Like at least I, hook up. Yes. Like at least you at least try. Like <laughs> what, is the, what the hell? Like all that passion, all that emotion, like winning the gold medal together. Like doesn't, the, I, obviously I, I did not know these people two weeks ago. Um, so no <laughs> idea what they went through, what their relationship looked like. However, I feel like winning the gold medal together would like trump anything that they had been through previously. Like that trope of like breaking up, but then still having to compete and then like go back to the Olympic village, one bed, one cardboard bed. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Hi. We're talking about Olympic love story right now. Catch yeah. up. What's that? I'll, I'll explain later. <laughs> he goes, what's that? <laughs> but yeah, I like, could, I like the book writes itself. It, I need an author to be like, Y'all, can I have your permission to take your story and run with it? Um, because I would eat that up every day of the week. A hundred percent. It's Me just too. so perfect. It's I just also like at the end of this, like after everything that they've just gone through, like how there's no way to just go back to like being broken up. Like, yeah. what are they gonna do? Just like go home and like be alone? Like, no, you're not. No, you're gonna get a you up text. You wanna come hang out with me in our gold medal? Yeah, I do. Why would every, you not? Every time you look at your most prized possession in the entire world, you're going to think of your ex? Like, no. At that point, you just don't move on. You just get married. I Yeah. yeah it's like if you really didn't want to be together, like, I would have, like, not been able to go through with that. No. Absolutely like, I, and, not. and the journey of going to the Olympics, which is, for some people, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and, like, just competing and being together all the time – and then being hot and sweaty on a tennis court, like, come on. Yeah. It's unreal. No. It's and a story I, I want together. to read. Yes. Ooh, Somebody you was know saying who that would they would do make it? a Hallmark movie. Absolutely. But you know who would do the book justice? Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh, well, I literally thought about Carrie Soto. Yes, she literally already writes about tennis. Like, yeah, like we're, we're already there. Yeah. We're already there. Oh, I, I man, I miss Taylor Jenkins Reid. I haven't read a Taylor Jenkins Reid book in, in a quite while. Time. Um, I still need to read Carrie Soto So Back. I have not read Katie, Carrie Soto So Back either. <gasps> Should we make that like a book club book? Yes, 
Wait, me and Spencer. So me and my sister Spencer, who I've talked about on the show before, um, just started a book talk account. Like we're actually posting yes. content. It's called Litz's Book Club. Make sure to follow us on TikTok and Instagram. But we've been saying that we want a legit book club. Yes. I think yes. we should start one and we should start with reading Carrie Soto so back. We also have, we are going, fun fact, Jordan and I and a bunch of other of my friends, we're going on a reading retreat and we're supposed to be reading a book leading up to that. Yes. I have it. I have, uh, no, me neither. I have to go get it. I don't have it. But it sounds really good. It's called yes. Quicksilver. I'm very excited to read it. I was reading the Goodreads um, on it and it sounds Sounds like a good book. Yes. No, I am very excited about it. You know what? I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to go pick it up. I got to go. I'm going to, if I go into Barnes and Noble, I'm going to buy like every book that I need. I, me and Spencer literally went to Barnes and Noble. Um, I think it was, yes, no, one day this weekend um, to record content. Oh my God, Sam, there are so, so many cringy. good books right oh. now. No, it wasn't. It was cute. It was fun. Um oh, fun. But so many good books right now. And I was like, I want all of you and I don't need any of you. Yeah, I went with my mom. There was one day that my mom and I, like, we were just, like, hanging out. And she was like, do you want to go to Barnes & Noble? And I was like, yeah, I do. And we went there. And I, like, was – I think I picked up, like, four or five books. And I was like, I don't need these. And I forced myself to put them down because that's, like – I mean, books are expensive. Yes. Books are at least $25 a pop nowadays. Unless you get them in like the clearance section or something like that or online used, you know, like it's expensive to have nice books. It really is. You know, I could easily go into Barnes and Noble and drop $300 without blinking. Oh, easy. Easy. Easy peasy squeezy. I actually, I need another bookshelf. I'm out of space on my bookshelf. I, I am actually very excited. I'm going to, so we're redoing a lot of the house right now. And one of the bedrooms is going to be like our guest bedroom, but I'm going to turn it into a little reading nook. And I'm going to put a whole bookcase on the wall and I want to fill up the entire bookcase. Sam, that is literally my dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the only thing, like I'm totally comfortable renting. The only thing that is like, Buy a house. Buy a house. Literally for my reading room. Yes. No, I'm very excited because it's going to be just like the spare bedroom, but it's a big room because it used to be Michael's bedroom. So it's like a big, big room. And I already have a giant brown chair that was my parents that they did not want anymore. And I was like, please give it to me. I want to sit and read in this chair. So I took it and it's just been sitting in that room collecting dust because I haven't been able to sit down and read it because it's just like the room's not ready. Yes. And that was my plan. I'm going to get a big bookshelf. I'm going to fill it up. So like half of that room is going to be like my little, my little reading nook. I am the most jealous person ever. That sounds like. You can come read in my reading nook. Yes. Thank you. I would love nothing more than that. And me and Sam would love nothing more than for you guys to give this episode a thumbs up and subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel here. Every hundred subscribers we get, we do something fun and we are creeping up on 400. We are crazy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, follow us on all of our socials as well on TikTok, Instagram, and threads. You can find us at the unsolicited underscore podcast on Twitter. You can find us at Sam and Jordan. And then if you're more of an audio person, we are also available wherever you get your audio podcasts. We say threads like we post on threads. That's so funny. I have not opened the threads app in months. Months. (laughs) We're still there, though. We're still there. Still active. <laughs> but yes. Also, no, I'm out of commission for the next two weeks. So no new episode for two weeks. And we'll come back right before football season starts. And we're gonna we'll do picks this year and we'll see how long we stick with them. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we'll <laughs> there right, just we'll might do. not be a graphic. <laughs> no, <laughs> we might just be winging it as we do. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye.